Welcome everyone to Algebra 2, Section 2.3. Factoring quadratics when a does not equal 1, aka when the leading coefficient does not equal 1. So a quick warm-up though, let's um, solve one by factoring where a does equal 1. So our first step is to actually move this 8 over here, so that way we have it equal to 0. So we'll do that by subtracting 8 from each side. And you get x squared minus 16 equals 0. This leaves us with what we call a difference of two squares, where you're subtracting, and they're both perfect squares. We love that because that just leads to a shortcut where you do the square root of the first minus the square root of the second, and the square root of the first plus the square root of the second. You can switch those parentheses around, and they equal 0. So now you can set each of those factors equal to 0, x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0 which leaves us with an answer as we solve both of them, as x is both positive and negative 4, which you can write this way, or you can write them separate. However you want to write that, it's fine. Two other words or synonyms that mean roots, those would be like zeros and x-intercepts, which I'm too lazy to write fully, so I'm just writing x-ints. All right, so how to factor when a does not equal 1. Um, and we're going to practice with 2x squared plus 9x plus 7. We see a is 2 because that's a leading coefficient with the x squared, um, whereas earlier it was just 1. Now, it says guess and check. That's a method I'm not going to teach. Um, it is a very um, viable and good method. Um, I just tend to prefer another one to teach it. So I'm going to be teaching um, factor and group instead. So um, I really should probably call it actually factor by grouping instead. So what we do here is I'm going to start off the same way I would when my a is 1 as when it's not 1. And that's going to be by making my x. So I'm going to make my x. I'm going to do that oh, right over here. So the top of it is a times c. So this time it's not 1 times 7, but it's 2 times 7. It gives us 14. On the bottom is b, and that's 9. So I need two numbers on the sides that multiply to the top, add to the bottom. They're both going to be positive, and it's in either order, a positive 7 and a positive 2. Now what I do is I don't just jump to the shortcut that I was able to when a was 1. Remember, when a was 1, we could do something like this. We could say, oh, x plus 7, x plus 2, move on. But we can't do that here because a is not 1. I should actually note real quick before I completely get rid of this that if you were to multiply these together, you would just get x squared to start, where really we need a 2x squared, which is one of the reasons it doesn't work when a is not 1. So what we have to do is we're going to rewrite this polynomial. Now we're going to make it 2x squared plus 7x plus 2x plus 7 equals 0. Now let me tell you how we got that. The first term and the last term stay the same. So 2x squared and plus 7 stay the same. The middle term splits from 9x into 7x plus 2x. And we get the 7 and 2 from the sides of the x that we made, the little puzzle we did. So that's always how we're going to determine our four um, terms here. So we're always going to want to make four terms when we do this. And the reason why is now we can do what's called grouping. So in order to group, you put the first two in a group, aka parenthesis, and the last two in a group. And I'm always going to take the symbol in between the second and third terms in that second parenthesis with the third term. So now I say, okay, back to GCS, greatest common factors, this first parenthesis. What goes in to both 2x squared and 7x? Well, they have an x in common. And that leaves us with 2x plus 7. And then I say the same thing for the next parenthesis. What goes into 2x plus 7? And actually, they just have a 1 in common. So before, we would just say, hey, you can't factor it. This time, we'll say, well, technically, you can. It's just only a 1. So it doesn't change anything inside of it. But here, for this method, we still need to write the plus 1. That's a positive one we pulled out. So what we do at this point is we say, hey, these are the same. So technically, this 
is multiplying with x, and this is multiplying with 1, aka 2x plus 7 is a factor of this first part, and 2x plus 7 is a factor of the second part. So we can say actually that's the greatest common factor between the first part and the second part. So we're left with 2x plus 7 out in front, just like we put an x out in front or a positive 1 out in front. Now we say, well, what's left? Just like before, remember the long way of what we would have done was take on the, from here to here is we would have taken 2x squared, this one right here, divide by x, your GCF, and arrive at 2x, which leaves you with what's the first part of the parenthesis. Then you would say, okay, 7x, the next term, divided by x, the GCF, would leave us with 7, aka the second part there. So we're really going to do the same idea here. How it's going to look this time is we're going to do this whole thing, x times 2x plus 7. And we're going to say, okay, if this whole thing is a GCF, 2x plus 7, let's divide by that. Those actually reduce since they're an entire parenthesis, or the entire parentheses are exactly identical, I should say, and leaves us with x. Hence what we have there. So we're going to put that in another parenthesis. And we do the same thing with this one over here, and we say, okay, well, 1 times 2x plus 7 and if we're taking out the 2x plus 7 as a GCF, we're left with 1. And so then we can say, okay, we're going to put that right in here, plus 1. And this still equals 0. That doesn't change. Now we have our two factors. So 2x squared plus 9x plus 7 factored into 2x plus 7 and x plus 1. And we could check our work by foiling or distributing again and saying, okay, well, 2x times x, 2x times 1, 7 times x, and 7 times 1. And we would end up right with this back on that first line, that blue one that we had. And if you combine like terms, you'd end up right with the start. So from here, what we'll do is we'll set each of these equal to 0, just like we did before. 2x plus 7 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. And we solve both of them. So the left one, you'd subtract 7 and then divide by 2 to get negative 7 over 2. The right one, you subtract 1 and get negative 1. And those are the two answers. And you could plug um, each of those in separately into this equation for both x's and find that it works. It does equal 0. So a quick little recap. What we did here before we move on and actually start using this is... We went through this and said, okay, we're going to turn three terms into four terms. And what we did to do that, or how we got there, was we made the x again. And we did the sides of the x, which I still have underlined in orange, a 7 and a 2. And we used that to split up this middle term. The first and the last terms just stayed the same. Those were good. Now, from there, that allowed us to say, okay, the GCF of the first part was x, the GCF of the second part was just a 1. So we said, okay, hey, these are identical. They should be identical. If they're not identical here, you made a mistake. So we pulled that out in front, and our other parenthesis is really just what's left, the x and the positive 1. Then you solve each of those, as you said, them equal to 0. All right, example 1, we have a lot of different parts to example 1 here. Example 1a, 4u squared plus 12u plus 5. So this is one where we make the x because there's no GCF. 4 times 5 at the top is 20. The b is 12. So we say what two numbers multiply to the top, add to the bottom. It's going to be a positive 10 and a positive 2 in either order. Now remember, we can't just go and put u plus 10 and u plus 2, unfortunately we have to do is rewrite it. The first term stays the same, the last term stays the same, and this middle splits into two different ones. 
into plus 10 and plus 2. But remember, if this one had a u on it, these both have to have a u on it in order to combine back into 12u. And this doesn't say equal 0, so we'll just leave it not equal to 0, I should. Now I group the first two. I group the last two. And once again, I'm going to take that symbol with the third term there. And I say, okay, what goes into both 4u squared and 10u? Well, 2u does, and that leaves me with 2u plus 5. And I say, okay, well, what goes into 2u plus 5? And actually, it's just a positive 1 again. That won't always be the case, but it has happened to be the first two problems we've done. And we're left with 2u plus 5. And we notice, hey, these parentheses are identical. That's a good thing. So we pull that parenthesis out in front as a new GCF, and we say, what's left over? 2u plus 1. That's our new second parenthesis. And those are our two parentheses, 2u plus 5 and 2u plus 1. I know it kind of looks like a 2w. Let me fix that. There we go. Moving on to letter B, 4x squared minus 9x plus 2. I'm going to make the x. 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 9 is B. Negative 8 and a negative 1 do the trick. So we do 4x squared, we do positive 2, the middle splits into negative 8x minus 1x, or just minus x. Now I group the first two, group the last two, once again taking the sign, the symbol, with that third term. And we say, what goes into both 4x squared and negative 8x? Well, 4x does, and we're left with x minus 2. And what goes into both negative x and positive 2? Well, only a 1, but we don't want it to start out negative. So we take out a negative 1, which makes it x minus 2. We notice x minus 2 and x minus 2, parentheses are identical, pull it out in front, and then we're left with 4x minus 1. Now I want to say real quick that if you ever have a time where the parentheses aren't identical, right here and right here, I mentioned earlier that means you made a mistake. I also want to um, double highlight that if you were to try to continue on and pull that one out in front, even if they're not the same, you would continue to further um, mess up the problem. So it would actually compound the mistake and make it worse. So back up and reconfigure so that way you can get parentheses that do match. And don't just force them to match, it should happen naturally. Letter C, 3p squared minus p minus 2. Might not be a bad idea to try one of these on your own. So pause the video and try it and come back to it and replay the video once, I, once you are done or stuck. 3 times negative 2 at the top is negative 6, negative 1 at the bottom. On the sides, you get negative 3 and positive 2. Gives you 3p squared minus 3p plus 2p minus 2. Remember, the first and the last terms stay the same and the middle term splits into two different terms there. And that minus 3p plus 2p. Because if we combined those again, added them, you get negative p. Group the first two, group the last two, with the symbol going with the third term. GCF of the first parenthesis is 3p, and we're left with p minus 1. GCF of the second parenthesis is a positive 2, and you're left with p minus 1. Those are identical. Put p minus 1 out front, we're left with 3p plus 2 in the other parenthesis. Letter D, 7x squared minus 20x minus 3. Same idea, negative 21 out in front because a times c, negative 20 on the bottom. This is going to be a negative 21 and a positive 1. Rewrite it, 7x squared minus 21x plus x, or 1x, minus 3. Group the first two, group the last two, and we say, okay, well, 7x goes into the first parenthesis, and we're left with x minus 3. And it's a positive 1 goes into the second parenthesis, and we're left with x minus 3. A good way to know if you're just going to be left with a positive 1 or not outside that second parenthesis is if the second parenthesis already matches that first one after you factor it out. So those are identical. So we'll pull that out in front, x minus 3, and we're left with 7x plus 1. Let me re-box that so it doesn't get in the way of letter F later. 
All right, letter E. Let me change up some colors here. Get some variety going. I still like that blue, though. So make the X. I'm going to put negative 30 on the top, negative 13 on the, on the bottom, excuse me. The size, I'm going to have negative 10 and negative, or excuse me, not negative 10, negative 3, because the top has to be negative, so I have to have a negative and a positive. Negative 15, positive 2 will work instead. So it leaves me with 5x squared minus 15x plus 2x minus 6. If I would have stuck with the negative 10 and negative 3, we would have noticed it actually would have not worked on this problem. Continuing on, we group the first two. I don't know why my pencil messed up there, but that's okay. And group the last two. 5x goes into the first parenthesis, and you're left with x minus 3. Positive 2 goes into the second parenthesis, and you're left with x minus 3. x minus 3 is the same for both parentheses. That's good. And we're left with, in the other parenthesis, 5x plus 2. Last but not least for this page, 6x squared minus 7x minus 10. Make the x, negative 16 on the top, negative 7 here at the bottom, and the two numbers on the side that will add up to negative 7 and multiply to negative 60 are negative 12 and positive 5. Rewrite this as 6x squared minus 12x plus 5x minus 10. Group the first two, group the last two, I mean, a 6x goes into the first two. A 2x also does, but 6x is greater, and we want the greatest common factor. We're left with x minus 2, a positive 5 in the second parenthesis, and we're left with x minus 2. Those are the same. That's good. And so we say, okay, x minus 2 out in front, 6x plus 5 in the second parenthesis. Now, let's talk about our special patterns again, okay? And these are going to have some um, that we see, saw last class as well in section 2.2. So difference of two squares. So reminder, this is when you have a squared minus b squared. And that's going to be a minus b and a plus b like we had in our warm-up, where it's the square root of the first and the square root of the second, and one subtraction, one's addition. So here with 4x squared minus 9, it is subtraction, so a difference. There are two different things. And 4x squared is a perfect square because 2x times 2x. 9 is a perfect square because it's 3 times 3. So we can say, hey, 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 3 will do the trick. You can always check your work by foiling again and combining like terms. Perfect square trinomial for addition. That is going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. We talked about that last class as well. And that factors into a plus b being squared, the quantity squared, because it's just a plus b times a plus b. So factoring that over here, we say, okay, well, 3y times 3y is 9y squared. 7 times 7 is 49. And 7 times 3y, the square root times the square root, is 21y. And if we double that, we get 42y. So that's 2ab in the middle. Okay, that's a good sign. So we get 3y plus 7, and there's two of them, so we square it. Or we can write each parenthesis separately. Same idea with letter C, except for you have subtraction for your middle term. So it's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And the only thing that changes in your um, factor is it's a minus b being squared instead of a plus b. So 25t squared, that's 5t and 5t. Under 21, that's 11 and 11. In the middle, negative 110, that's 5t five times, five times 11, 55t. Double it to get 110t. So what we can do now is make this the perfect square trinomial. So it's 5t and 11, but because this is subtraction, we make this subtraction and square it. All right, just a few more examples here. Now, example two, we have four different parts of it. And these sometimes say, hey, sometimes you can have a GCF first, and we'll have that in all four of these. So example two, 4x squared minus 4, we have a GCF of 4. So even though this is a perfect square right now, 
um, per difference of two squares right now, I should say, we actually want to factor out a four first because that'll make our life easier. Because, hey, look, we still have a difference of two squares. It's just a smaller one. So we now say, okay, well, that's x minus one and x plus one because one times one is one. X times X is X squared. If you didn't factor out that four first, what you'd have is two X minus two and two X plus two. And you notice, well, the difference between this and this are the twos in the parentheses. So you'd have to factor out a GCF of this one and say, well, it's two and X minus one, and this is another two and x plus 1. And then you have to take these twos and multiply them with each other. And so you end up having to get the same result, but it's more work, and it can be hard to remember. I don't like either of those ideas. So taking the GCF first makes the number smaller and makes your work less. Letter B, negative 3y squared minus 18y. GCF is negative 3y because remember we do not want it to start negative. And we're left with y plus 6. And that's actually it. We can't do anything with y plus 6. Letter C, factor out the GCF first. It would be a negative 2, not a negative 4, because 4 does not go into 10. We're left with 2m squared minus 5m, to me plus 5m, and then minus 12. Now to factor this more in the parentheses, we have to make the x because two is not a perfect square and 12 is not a perfect square. So two times negative 12 with our new parentheses is negative 24, and on the bottom it's five. So two numbers that multiply to negative 24 add up to five, that's negative three, positive eight. So as I write this, I have my two m squared, my minus three m, my plus eight m, and my last term, the negative 12, but I can't forget that negative two out in front here. Now I have to group my first two and my last two, and I'm going to make a separate parenthesis, so that way I know the negative two is still multiplying with everything that I factored out. And what goes into 2m squared minus 3m? Well, m does, and we're left with 2m minus 3. And what goes into 8m minus 12? Positive 4. And you're left with 2m minus 3. And outside of all this, we still have the negative 2. Now we say, okay, well, these parentheses are identical. It's a good thing. Put that out in front. Our other parentheses, what's left? m plus 4. And we can't forget about that negative 2. And we'd be done with that problem. Letter D, 5z squared minus 45z plus 40. Factor out a 5 to start. Make your life way easier. You get z squared minus 9z plus uh, 4. It makes me plus 8. That works better. All right, so even though z squared is a perfect square, 8 is not. We need to make an x. So I make an x. At the top is going to be 8. Bottom is negative 9. I get negative 8, negative 1. And this one, a is 1. We might notice that, hey, we can use a shortcut. Now, if you still went the long way and rewrote it into four terms and grouped it and factored all that stuff, you would get the same answer as long as you do the math correctly. So here I have 5 and then my two parentheses, z minus 8 and z minus 1 in either order. On to example 3 here. Four more examples and we're done with this section. Woo! Factor each equation, then solve. So we notice these are equal to 0 now. It's a big change. So we just have to add on that last piece where we set each parenthesis or each factor equal to zero. 16y squared minus 40y plus 25. So before I go any further, I check for a GCF, but nothing goes into everything. Okay, next step, to try and make my life easier before I make an X and I say, okay, 16 times 25, oof, that's gonna be a big number, I don't like that. I say, hey, wait, 16y squared? That's 4y times 4y. 25? That's 5 times 5. Well, this middle, 5 times 4y, that's 20y. And 40 is double that. So I have a perfect square trinomial, the subtraction version. 
So what I can do is I just write 4y minus 5. Square root of the first, square root of the second, and that subtraction, because that middle is subtraction. And we square it, and that equals 0. Now we can solve this a couple ways from here. We could square root both sides, or we can also say, hey, look, remember there's two of them when you're squaring something. That's what squaring literally means is two multiplied together. So those are our factors. So we have 4y minus 5 equals 0, and 4y minus 5 equals 0. You notice that they're identical. So as we solve each of them, we end up with 5 over 4. And you can either write that twice or write it once. I'm really good either way um, because this is the rare scenario. We end up just getting one answer and one answer only because it was equal to zero, um, because the parentheses were the same, excuse me, in this method. Or if you use the square root method, it would be because it's equal to zero. All right, letter B, 36 x squared minus 16. Now these are all, these are a difference of two squares. But if I factor out a four first, that makes my life easier. Cause then I'm left with nine x squared minus four. Smaller numbers, I love smaller numbers. That now leaves me with three x minus two and three x plus two when I factor this difference of two squares equals zero. And I don't have to worry about this four equaling zero because it will never equal zero and there's no variable with it. So I do my three x minus two equals zero and my three x plus two equals zero. I solve each of these and I get a positive and negative version of two over three. Which once again, you can write separately or together like I did. Letter C, four x squared minus 81. Might be a good idea to try C and D on your own real quick, by the way. On C, I look for a GCF. There is none. However, two terms, we want to look for a difference of two squares. It is subtraction. 4x squared is a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. So we do the square root of the first, 2x, square root of the second, 9 in each parenthesis. And you just make one parenthesis subtraction, one parenthesis addition, and you're good. Oop, but wait, I forgot. It's equal to 0. Now I have to solve each one after I set them equal to zero. So that leads me to x equal to positive and negative nine over two. Now we've ended up having these first three so far either be the same answer twice or a positive and negative version of the same number. We'll see on letter D that that's not always the case. And actually most commonly, it won't be the case. Letter D, before you do 15 times the negative 63 on the top and start doing factors of that, I would encourage you to factor out a 3. And we'll be left with 5p squared plus 8p minus 21, or 91. Now I'm going to make an x, and negative 21 times 5 is negative 105, and 8 on the bottom. Still not ideal for numbers to deal with, but it would have been much worse. Now we say, okay, well, a negative and a positive will multiply to a negative, and the bigger number has to be positive to add up to a positive 8. Negative 7, positive 15, do the trick. A is not 1, so we have to rewrite 5p squared minus 7p plus 15p minus 91 times that 3 equals 0. Group the first two, group the last two, and we say, hey, first two, they have a p in common, you have with 5p minus 7. Last two, they have a 3 in common. And you're left with 5p minus 7. You can't forget about the 3 multiplying with everything. That equals 0. Now, we, keep, we continue factoring by saying, hey, those parentheses are the same. Pull that out in front. Our other parentheses the leftovers, p plus 3 with that three out in front still. And it equals zero. Now we can set each parenthesis or each factor equal to zero. And we don't have to worry about the three out in front for setting it equal to zero because there's no variable with it. Five P minus seven equals zero. P plus three equals zero. Solving both of these leaves you with P equals seven over five and P equals negative three. All right, that is section 
So a reminder, there are other methods you can use, such as guess and check. Um, the method I prefer to teach is factoring by grouping. Um, but whatever method you do choose, I'm not going to penalize you for. Um, so if you happen to choose a different one than I teach, that's perfectly okay with me. Um, I want you to find one that works for you. Um, if this one works for you, great. Don't worry about finding other ones. Um, if it doesn't, and you're really not understanding this still, and you feel like you will never understand it, maybe try and find another one.